We're going to be taking a look at some real 3D controls, not something that's an approximation. Could you tell us about Sixens uh, technology and uh, what we're going to be seeing a little bit? Sure. So um, Six Sense uh, Entertainment develops uh, tracking technologies that utilize a, a magnetic sensor. So we have a, a paired system where there's a base unit that generates a very weak magnetic field that the controllers can tune into and use to compute their position and orientation. Um, the real benefits of using the magnetic technology is that we're able to compute the exact position and orientation of the controller in a, a, an exact measurement in millimeters and degrees as opposed to uh, inertial sensors that just measure acceleration, as well as um, being very high performance, so it's a uh, very low latency system. Um, and as we're showing here in the Razer booth, um, we're developing a product with Razer um, that's called the Razer Hydra that we just uh, are showing for the first time here at CES. And, um, it definitely targets Razer's market of serious gamers because it's a very high performance, very uh, twitchy, you know, a competitive level motion controller. Great. Well, we're going to see a brand new game. Um, who's going to be showing us a demo? So, um, Dan Danny Woodle is uh, our lead designer, and he's uh, working with me on a set of content for Portal 2, which is a, um, a company by Valve Software that's going to be coming out this spring. Um, and it's uh, we're going to have a set of what we call a six sense motion pack. So it's going to be a set of uh, custom content for Portal 2 that you'll only be able to play with the Hydra controller. So it's going to utilize all the specific um, gaming concepts that are things like stretching and throwing and, um, and sliding portals. And so we'll see uh, in the demonstration the kind of concepts that uh, we're going to have uh, available with the game. Great, let's go take a look. Okay. Hi, my name is Danny Woodall. I'm the lead game designer for Portal 2 custom content from Six Sense. Based on all around the, the Razor Hydra, we see here is the magnetic base. Creates a nice magnetic field for these two controllers to be in and figure out which orientation and position they are relative to that base. These controllers have nice analog sticks and bumpers, two analog sticks on each joystick. They have both have button presses on them and we have nice face buttons as well. It's very ergonomic, it's very lightweight, there's no batteries because it's wired, very low latency, very high precision. So we're doing some custom content for Portal 2 and I'll just go ahead and walk you through it. So the first thing I'll demonstrate is the accuracy by showing you here a little cube. I really can just reach out in front of me and have this true position and orientation. But I can do so fast or very slowly. I have a one millimeter of accuracy and one degree of rotation accuracy. So if I took another one, you can really see how accurate it is when I try to like stack. Oops, when I try to like, let's do it again. I always just try to reach over and just try to stack one right on top. I really can just lay it right there. With this kind of technology, just by reaching, I can just let go and throw an object. I can add some spin to it. So we've also added a couple custom things that you can only do with the Hydra. One of them is in, in, in Portal, you're constantly taking a portal and rejiggering its orientation and, and position. But now, you can just grab the portal and drag it right under. Also, you can pull it right under you and you come right out. We've added this special cube where you can scale just by grabbing each side and going in and out. So we've decided to add some puzzles built around that where you like need to make a, a platform to get across. And at some point we decided, wow, this would be really fun if we take this scalable cube and change its physical properties as well. So that's a plate of glass down there. We dropped this little tiny cube and it didn't do anything. But if we come over here and we scale this thing up, we can drop it right through the glass. Now we can grab the cube and just reset its scale very quickly, reach up, punch out the glass, and then get rid of it. We're done with it. It becomes pretty much a, an extension of your arm at some point. You can just reach up, put it right in the fire, and toss it aside. Now with Portal 2, they have some great new mechanics, and they play so well with our Razor Hydra. Here you have a, a lens refracting cube. All you do is you stick it into the, le the laser and it changes, redirects the laser. Now with six degrees of freedom, I can sit over here and you know write my name, but instead I think I'll just light these guys up.
Jump by flicking the wrist up, crouch by ducking. Very smooth, organic gameplay. That's some very impressive gameplay and probably some very impressive things under the hood. Could you tell us a little bit more about how this actually works and uh, where are some of the challenges? I mean, logically it's a, uh, a very straightforward system, but I suspect that the executions are much harder. Sure. So um, the way the system works is that there's a, um, a series of coils in the base unit that generates a very weak field. There are uh, three coils in the base, orthogonally mounted, and there are three coils in each controller. Um, the, the, there's a bunch of amplification circuitry that um, we, work, we have a very close partnership with analog devices, so we use uh, analog devices amplifiers, and then um, we have a DSP that uses a bunch of pretty sophisticated math to crunch the field data into a position orientation. Um, so it's a very sensitive analog system, so a lot of the design work is in um, getting a very low noise and a very uh, nice clean signal. As you can imagine, the magnetic field is extremely uh, a small amount of induced current, so it uh, you know, has to be very uh, finely tuned. And, I'm sorry, and resistant to more uh, noise, both induced from the system internally as well as environmental. Now, where is the DSP actually located, and uh, what? How much overhead is in there? Is this a high performance DSP? No, it's actually one. It's uh, the analog device's Blackfin processor, so it's uh, uh, just a, it's one of their more cost-effective um, parts. So it's. Uh, um, there's not a huge load, but it is um, does quite a bit of floating point math um, on there. So it's something that um, allows the system to be completely autonomous. So the, there's one DSP in, uh, in the base unit. Uh, the, this particular controller design has wires going from the controllers, and that lets us really minimize latency for the Razer product. It's a, as you'll see, as we saw in the demo, there's a super, super low latency, very you know uh, twitchy uh, system, and uh, any kind of RF would really, you know, generally add up to 20 milliseconds of latency. Um, so, and uh, by having the tethers, we can have a single DSP that computes the position for both controllers in the base unit. Um, and um, so it, it does the, the position solution for both controllers, and then the data that gets sent over the USB is purely position data. So it's X, Y, Z, and then the orientation at that point. So there's no processing overhead for the host computer, which is uh, really important now. Nowadays, it'll work on a netbook computer. It'll work on a very low-power workstation, and it doesn't require a lot of processing. Like some more camera-based tracking systems mm -hmm. um, have to do a lot of uh, image recognition and computer vision solutions that can be very compute-intensive. Um, so our system uh, just uh, is very light on uh, processor overhead. Okay. Now I know that you're concentrating on the game controllers at this point in time. But in terms of the technology, it sounds like it has a lot of different applications. Uh, is there a, a limit on the number of different kinds of sensors that you can have, or actually a, a number of controllers, for example? No, since the, it's the base unit that's generating the magnetic field, you could have as many sensors in that field as is appropriate. So you could have wearable sensors for um, exercise ap applications or dance applications where you could have them attached to your wrists and your body and your head. Or if you imagine like uh, um, going from gaming uh, anywhere from uh, golf or sport games, you could have like a casual uh, Tiger Woods style golf game. But you could buy accessories that you could put on your head and your waist and your wrist to turn it into a full uh, golf simulator. You know, uh, so it really is a scalable system to uh, you know target lots of different applications. Now you're using this primarily with people and tracking things like that. But is there any limitation because of the magnetic field if you were going to be uh, tracking devices, uh, for example? Um, it, it depends on the uh, precision requirements. Um, so generally, it's very robust to a lot of environmental conditions. Um, you have to kind of manage the amount of metallic surfaces that are around because they will cause some distortion in the field, which will cause some bending of your measured positions. So um, it does uh, kind of depend on the application, but you certainly could use it for a lot of uh, like just uh, measuring of other objects. Um, in the entertainment field, we certainly you know envision putting it on this plastic steering wheel or on a golf club, or you, you could attach it to your real golf club and practice golfing in your living room. How big is the uh, actual sensing unit then, if you're going to drop it on a golf club? Um, really, for uh, 
a, a wireless solution like that, the largest part is always going to be the battery. And for any kind of a, you know, as with a lot of technology you see here, you know, the battery tech is still kind of the biggest part. Um, the sense coils are pretty small, you know, on the order of a you know pretty small little module that can be uh, pretty well hidden anywhere. But um, once you add in the RF and you know the batteries and such, it's kind of standard wireless device kind of stuff. Um, that's really the limiting factor of the size. Excellent. Well, I think they know where to go online to find some of the game stuff, but if you want to find out more about the technology of your company, where can they look online? Um, so, uh, SixSense.com is a great place to start. We have some videos from Engineering TV that are posted up there from a uh, time in the past that are uh, really good uh, technical overviews. Um, and then, of course, the Razer website has uh, a lot of information about the Razer Hydra controller. Great. Thanks very much. Great. Thanks, Bill.